up everybody it's kelsey brianna j and in today's video i want to share with you all my least favorite makeup brushes that i have in my collection i've been wanting to do this video for a long time because i've been collecting brushes for a long time since i initially started buying makeup brushes i've changed the way that i do makeup several times as my makeup skills continue to evolve and my makeup preferences change so do my tools so some of these brushes i've had for quite some time some of them i've not had as long but i just have changed my mind about them and i just don't use them as much i've developed an affinity for a specific type of brush i'm very particular in how i like my brushes to be and perform the density of certain brushes the length of handle that i prefer the type of ferrule that i like and even to the type of brush hair i've become more particular about what type of brushes i like and these just don't fit the cut anymore so in no particular order, I want to show you all some brushes that I just don't rock with anymore. And the first one being the NARS Eda brush. If you all were on YouTube like maybe five to seven years ago, then you'll know that this brush was all the rage. And to be completely honest, completely honest i never really liked this brush i bought this brush because i bought into the hype and this is definitely what that was like i was using this and this brush was always kind of itchy scratchy to me and i know i like my brushes to be a lot softer some bronzers and contour products you do need a more abrasive brush to pick up the products like the tom ford bronzer you can't use a super soft brush with that because you'll get nowhere with it but this is like the opposite end of that spectrum to where my face almost bleeds when I use it I'm just kidding I'm just kidding but it's very itchy it's not very comfortable and then the way that it is it just kind of carves out the cheek and it doesn't really really blend it very well so you're going to be left with a pretty harsh line with it and I just never really liked it the second brush that I have kept in my collection came from none other than Pat McGrath and I got this brush because I bought a set from her. This is the Buffer 003 brush and as you all can see on the brush it has a sticker on it. So it wasn't just the highest quality brush ever but like I said it came in a set. So it had one of her pressed pigments, it had this and then it had like a cream highlighter duo stick type product. So I kept it because I paid so much money for those kits and I was like Pat McGrath made it. I'm going to keep it for collector's purposes but honestly I don't like the brush and I've never liked it and I've never used it. And this year she actually came out with those same pigments in a palette to where you didn't have to get the set and I'm like because mm, I never really wanted the set. I just wanted those pressed pigments but she didn't give the option to just buy the pigments when she first launched the set. It was either you buy the entire set and you get this brush and that other products or you get none of it. You know, I'm now stuck with this brush that I don't like, but I learned a valuable lesson. Wait. <laughs> In this video, I have a few different MAC brushes, and that's not because I'm beating up on MAC or that I don't like the quality of MAC brushes. If you guys watch any of my videos, then you'll know that the majority of my brush collection, especially over the years, has been primarily MAC. That's because I got my first start with makeup brushes at MAC. I started buying makeup brushes when I was a kid from MAC, and I just have collected and collected and collected. So the first one I knew I had no business buying is this brush. This is the 163 brush. It's like a flat, maybe stippling brush. It's doesn't have much flexibility at all and the bristles are very compacted so this brush gets really dirty and it's pretty hard to clean and whenever you try to use it to apply your products it's like it's just stamping it in there and it's just hard and it hurts and it's like girl i don't know where i thought i was going with this brush i definitely don't like it for powder i think that's what i wanted it for it was like during the phase of where contour was just like the biggest and the best and just everything uh oh i got suckered in i was working at mac at the time and i would just buy full collections of mac stuff even if i don't need it and that's definitely one of the things that i could have left at the store Next is the MAC 137 brush and I remember when and where I bought this brush. MAC was testing out a few new different shapes in the line and this was one of them. And some of the people that I was working at my MAC counter with called this Cinderella's brush and I was like that is so cute. It's just like a little fairy tale brush and you know it just kind of sold me on that and I was like I'm going to use this for a highlight. 
I never ever use this for highlight. And then I was like, I'm going to use this to dust off underneath my eyes, which is pretty valid. I could, but it's so long and flimsy that it's just awkward and uncomfortable. And half the time the bristles get in my eyelids and I'm just like, no, what was I thinking with this brush? Like, I guess it's not a bad brush, but it's just so long and weird that it's just like, why? Next, this is one of the oldest brushes that I have in my collection, but I've never liked it. This is the 150 brush. It is a large powder brush and I really felt like I was doing something when I bought this brush because this one is one of the more expensive brushes that MAC makes. I believe this one is upwards of $50 and when I bought it, I don't think it was that much, but still in retrospect to the time in which I bought it, it still was more expensive than other brushes. So I was like, yes, I'm gonna apply my makeup with this and I will put my bronzer on with this. I will put my blush on with this, my powder on with this. Everything went on with this brush and at the time when I bought it, like, Highlight wasn't really even a thing, so I would put like my gold deposit mineralized skin finish everywhere on with this brush. So it was just foolish and it was just scratching my little face up. This brush has always been itchy scratchy. It's never been soft. I tried to soften it up by washing it with so many different things and it never worked. The one positive thing that I can say about this brush is that it's always been a full brush. Like it's never gotten thin. I've probably had this brush more than 10 years. Probably I've had this for 15 years and I bedazzled it in everything. Like I really spent my time sitting there bedazzling this brush, but it's just always been itchy. Ow. <laughs> okay, so one more MAC brush and then I'm gonna leave MAC alone, I promise. This is the 267 brush. Now I'm gonna zoom all the way in and show you all what this brush looks like up close and you tell me what you would use this brush for. It's like a curved like little brush. Why? <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get this brush and get eyeshadow on it and I'm going to press it on my lid and that's how I'm gonna do my eyeliner with eyeshadows. Do I use this big brush whenever I want to do that technique? No. Why don't I use it, you say? Because it's too big. It really doesn't even hug it. It takes so much effort to apply the eyeshadow with this brush and not poke yourself in the eyelid. I don't know what they were thinking with this brush. I don't know what I was thinking with buying this brush, but I guess this is a part of my history and I'm gonna keep it just for keepsakes and just to laugh and you know be able to do stuff like this and be like, what was I thinking? But um, am I gonna use it? Negative. Never. Two of the same brushes, different brands. This one is from Tom Ford. This is the Zero One brush, and this one is from Chanel, and this is the Number Six Foundation brush. I believe both of these brushes have been discontinued, but I used to apply my foundation with these type brushes, and I hate that now. I refuse to sit there and basically spackle on my foundation on my face. I've just upgraded totally. First I went to like a buffer type foundation brush. Now I prefer to apply my foundation with sponges. But if I had to go back to a brush to apply my foundation, neither one of these brushes would be it. Now this brush is much softer. I know some people like to apply their concealer with this type brush. I guess you could use this brush for that method, but just painting on your foundation like you would on the wall i'm off of that <laughs> that's a no and so therefore these brushes just kind of sit and collect dust next i have this sephora brush now this brush is kind of similar to the mac brush that i don't like except for these bristles are even shorter and this one kind of curves up so it is nearly impossible to clean this brush. I still feel like there's gunk down in here just because it collects down at the bottom of the brush and you can't really get to it to clean it out. I don't like the handle of this brush. I feel like it's really, really thick in here and then it gets very skinny. So it's like awkward to hold it either way it goes. And then just the shape of the brush and just how compact it is, it's always gonna apply and absorb too much of your product. No. I know why Sephora discontinued it. I just wasn't wise enough to know why when I was swiping that card. No, <sighs> this brush by Wayne Goss. This is the only brush by Wayne Goss that I do not care for. This one is the Zero One brush. I got this when I bought a set of his a few years ago and I was like, maybe I can make this work. No, I do not like this brush. The first thing that I don't like about it is that it's white. I don't like my bristles to look dirty. The bristles of this brush stain so easily and so I end up having to wash it three, four, five times 
just to get it clean. Every time I use it, I'm like, nope. I don't like to use it for foundation because I do feel like too much product goes down in here. I don't like using it for powder. I just don't like using it. This is literally the only Wayne Goss brush that I don't like. Every other brush is a go for me. All the eye brushes, all of the other face brushes. I mean, it's soft. Don't get me wrong. You can tell it's a nice quality brush. But the functionality of a brush is just not my style. So no. And the last two brushes that I have are both by Marc Jacobs. And I feel like I've more so outgrown these brushes because I definitely liked them when I bought them and I used to use them a ton. But I dislike them now for different reasons. So the first one is the Face 3 brush. So this is a very small, kabuki, compacted type brush and I would use this a lot for foundation. And it really gave me an airbrush finish. But what I don't like about this brush now is that I feel like it's too big. So I feel like I'm just slathering product on and it's not really going on with any rhyme or reason. It's just kind of going on. And the next thing that I don't like about this brush is that what I feel like it's a common pattern between the brushes that I don't like is too compacted and I cannot clean it properly. Like it's too thick. I still think it looks dirty now. And I used it maybe like a few weeks ago just to see like, are you sure you don't like this brush? And I still think it looks dirty. It's just a magnet for dirt and just staining. It won't get clean. Plus I don't like how thick this handle is. Again, like it's just too thick. I prefer a thinner handle. So the last brush, again by Marc Jacobs, is the bronzer brush, which I died to have this brush. Died. Like, I thought I was going to fall out if I did not have this brush. And the day that I finally bought it, I'm like, finally, I can mark that off of my list. I'm like, I'm going to bronze with this brush every day. But this brush is too big for bronzer. It's tapered, but, I mean, look at that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this brush for all over powder, which I still will use it for all over powder. It's just a pain in the butt to clean. And the bristles are kind of stiff like. I feel like it just doesn't give a flawless application. If I'm going to use a big old, big old brush like this, it's going to either be my La Mer, the powder brush, which as you all can see, it's just much more fluid in the movement. Look at this. Now look at this. Stiff. Or I'll use my Tom Ford bronzer brush, which I will never stop liking this brush. But these are my least favorite brushes that I have in my collection. On the opposite side of my least favorite brushes, I know you all are expecting my favorite brushes video. Now, let me give you all a little bit of an insight as to why I have not filmed that video. Number one, every brush that I love and I still use is discontinued either because they redid the bristles and they're now synthetic and they're no longer natural hair or either they totally discontinued the brush every single time I love a brush they take it away and they've redone it now I'm in the process of researching new brushes to be able to update my collection and give you guys my favorite brushes video I will have that video up in 2019 I promise you within the first quarter but please be patient with me and make sure you subscribe to my channel that way you don't miss any of my uploads and I will talk to you all in my very next video. Smooches. Bye.